actually this is the main panel of the whole forum it's state and IT and we're actually talking about state and IT on this panel it's uh, all about digi digital uh, services from the government it's all about uh, eGov and this uh, esteemed panelists are joining here to share insights with the uh, four of you <laughs> but uh, nevertheless thank you for your for having us here strategist just done a awesome awesome job uh, to combining all of us and actually discuss what we can do uh, in digital uh, service as a as a government and what we're planning to do so my name is Ruslan Rahambay I'm the investment director for Quest Ventures I'm from private sector our esteemed panelists uh, I'll give you just a brief uh, time to introduce yourself uh, let's let's start from you uh, <clears throat> my name is Rashad Kaligov actually I am the deputy chairman in the innovation and the digital development agency which is uh, under the Minister of uh, digital development and transport uh, as an agency, Azerbaijan. we are yes, Azerbaijan. As an agency in Azerbaijan, we are responsible mainly for the e-government and the implementation of the government e-government and the design of the government. Also, we are responsible for innovation and the digital literacy of the in the, in the country. Well, wow. thank you. You continue. Good evening, dear colleagues. I hope it's. Oh, close up, okay. Good evening, dear colleagues, and thank you, first of all. I am Ekaterina Elitza, representing National Agency of Public Registry under the Ministry of Justice of Georgia. And we'll dive into that uh, deeper after a few minutes in my presentation as well. And thank you again. All just. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Oljas. Uh, I represent the Almaty City Municipality. Almaty City Hall, Department of Digitalization. And uh, today uh, I represent Almaty City and I'll be talking about the solutions that we implement in the city for our citizens. Thank you. Good, evening. Please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chinabai. I represent uh, State Enterprise uh, AgriSmart under uh, Agriculture Ministry of Kyrgyz Republic. Thank you. Uh, hi, hi. Hello, evening, everyone. Name is Yahya Tuleshov. Uh, so I represent, well, I guess here uh, the, the Kazakh government. <laughs> uh, however, I work for the uh, state-owned company uh, eFinance Center. I'm the leading about 400 IT developers under the Ministry of Finance, Republic of Kazakhstan. Nice to meet you here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, so uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, we will have two presentations uh, from our esteemed panelists then we will uh, shift to our discussion. So first presentation is uh, from uh, Georgia. Yes. Thank you so much. So I'll find the best place to stand. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Well, as, we have, as I have already stated, uh, today I'm presenting National Agency of Public Registry under the Ministry of Justice of Georgia. Uh, NAPR is, yeah. Uh, Yes. NAPR is a public entity uh, of legal law, uh, which basically operates uh, eight registers. Oh, I'm going, sorry, 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 just a second. Yes, of public law, which was established in 2004, and basically it operates register of immovable property, registry of um, pledge, registry of political parties, registry of addressing, and what makes it appear quite significant is that it also operates geodesic cadastre and cartography, as well. And from 2013, it appear was tasked to coordinate creation, implementation, and development of national spatial data infrastructure (NSDI) in whole Georgia. Um, and PR quite embraces the technical development and innovations to create services and products tailored to the current and future needs of Georgian public. 
And uh, from 2004, uh, basic uh, legislative, administrative, and technological development, which was um, implemented in NAPR, was to create simplifying registering systems. And as of today, we have created one-stop shop, fast and efficient uh, registration services, integrated and um, uh, centralized immovable property registration and cadaster, decentralized and delegated customer service and front offices and electronic services, and uh, uh, what's it's quite impressive in-house uh, developed web-based uh, softwares. Uh, every single documentation and information which is stored in National Agency of Public Registry is publicly accessible and completely free. Uh, and um, also, this is the, uh, which, uh, the delegated front offices, for example, public service hall, um, 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 banks, and appear territorial offices, notaries, and we can see the amount, estimated amount of the services, what NAPR basically offers, and also electronic services as well. Uh, before we dive deeper in technological de uh, development, I would like to speak a little about systematic land registration reform, which is ongoing now in Georgia. Uh, systematic land registration reform is a nationwide reform, which offers uh, now, basically, from 1992, uh, several reforms were inf implemented to register land in Georgia, uh, but um, uh, one of the third land plots in Georgia was not registered until this project or was not recorded accurately in cadastral data. That meant that significant part of the Georgian land was excluded from economic turnover, and uh, we, this uh, systematic reg re registration reform uh, aims to fix that, and uh, the, the the reform will cover all the Georgia. And um, in this process, quite a significant achievement what we have is electronic means software, which is um, uh, uh, with the support of the World Bank funded project, Irrigation and Land Market Development. Uh, with the co close cooperation with the NAPR IT team, we developed uh, electronic means software. Basically, you can see that uh, when you enter um, uh, informa identification information in the software, you can see land plot cadastral map, you can see GAC points, uh, building descriptions, data on the owners, interested persons, family members, household members. Uh, uh, this uh, electronic means software is for the field collection of the data. So uh, what makes its novelty and um, a really important achievement is that uh, electronic means software is connected to the real time connected to the NAPR servers. This is the one. And the second is the uh, data proceedings and the um, uh, surveying and measurement processes are conducted parallel regime and I have like really smart, uh, small and short video to show you how that is conducted. So in the field when the surveyor um, uh, will type down all the necessary information in the fields, uh, after the survey, uh, in the survey, uh, in the surveying process, uh, all the information that is needed uh, for the registration of the land plot is on one uh, um, application. Unfortunately, this application uh, as of today is only in Georgian, but we plan to make it in English as well. Um, next uh, thing is interactive um, uh, map, MapsGoG. Uh, MapsGoG was um, uh, based on the um, uh, platform which was created 15 years ago by NAPR's IT team, but this new web, uh, web uh, application is uh, much more modern, much more faster, and what is impressive is that uh, we can see the, if all the information about the cadastro addresses, uh, administrative territorial units, transport information, hydrography, also orthophoto and um, uh, topographic maps as well. And uh, this makes all the information accessible for every single interested person. And in 2021, NAPR's in-house IT team with the support of Norwegian project developed an uh, application on the uh, same application on the Android and on the iOS systems. Uh, as of today, we are uh, developing our, uh, our web uh, and applications much more wider and we are planning to make it in English as well. Uh, another thing, just shortly, is that Georgia is a part of European, European map um, projects, meaning that Georgia is part of European global map, European regional map, and for us it's uh, quite essential that the information that European Union institutions are getting is valid and official source, and that is what NPR actually does. 
Uh, another thing is that NAPR chain is accessible. NAPR plans to introduce smart contracts and AI in, his, uh, in its uh, new application. And, um, uh, and what, uh, basically what, uh, why the smart contract a, a incorporation is the novelty is that uh, in this platform, not only owners uh, or the buyers or the sellers are incorporated, but we also um, incorporate uh, commercial banks and commercial banks account. This means that uh, transactions will be not made from the buyer to, uh, to the uh, seller of the property, but uh, transactions will be made on the ba banking account. And uh, after the filling of the pre-requirement fields, and if the, all the pre-requirements are met, and the uh, bank gets an appears a green light to, try to proceed the transaction, um, uh, bank will uh, transact all the funds to the uh, buyer of the property, and the immovable property will be recorded in the, on the seller's uh, name. So basically, this is a, a threefold verification and security uh, process, so which will make all the processes and transactions much more um, accessible, and we will reduce the time necessity. Also, lastly, I would like to point out the international cooperation and its role in Georgia uh, in NAP for NAPR, and um, thank all, all, all of you for coming today and listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katerine. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, next presentation from uh, Chinibai. Please, floor is yours. Можно к началу? Можно вперед? Ау? Да, да, нормально. Добрый вечер всем еще раз. Извиняюсь, как бы я продолжу, наверное, на русском, так проще и... Good evening, everyone. Apologies. I'll probably continue in Russian. Ministry of Agriculture is probably one of the biggest ministries in this country. If I tell you about all the digital solutions we have, one day won't be enough. Let me speak about one particular product. This product is called AgroMap. What is designed for... We have one big problem, because getting data And to address this problem, we use remote sensing or satellite imagery. And so here is a problem. Here is a solution with the help of remote sensing and an eye. We can actually define uh, the productivity of specific pastures. At this particular stage, this is for the internal use only, ministry's eyes only. But as you understand, for artificial intelligence, you need to have some big data. We are working to collect this data in the future. We will be providing information to the regular systems via some open domain. To address this problem, we used these specific tools tools that are openly available, some of them open-coded. And, and the results of this work, well, here we also have one more model which, with the help of satellite imagery, can draw contours or basically define some particular vegetation cover for the specific areas. So training in this model, we used 3,682 images with some data. Thank you. Continue with the very fresh, I hope we're still fresh. Uh, with the discussion. So, uh, as I already mentioned, I'm from the private sector. You guys are all from government or government-related agencies. 
Uh, our theme is state and IT and everything what with digital. Uh, for me, uh, from the private sector, is also interesting what you guys are doing, right? But uh, going to the background, 30 years ago, all our countries, so we have Kyrgyzstan, we have Georgia, we have Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, we started same 30 years ago. But with digital uh, solutions, with digitalizing the whole government services, everyone has its own approach. And I'm honestly interested what approach each country uh, took from the beginning and where are you going? Can we start with you? Thank you, Ruslan. Uh, in Azerbaijan, actually, we have started this journey 10 years ago in 2013. We have developed our first eGov platform where we saw that we have digitalized the services. So uh, in this days, we were proud of our product, actually. But now when we are looking back to our first product, we see that we made a lot of mistakes. Maybe this is a, this is a normal journey in technology that as the, day, the technologies change, we should adapt our products also to, to new trends. And in 2018, we have redeveloped our second version of our eGov platform. This year, we have a new platform and we, we have a new approach because in our previous versions, the, the important, the, the eGov portals that we had, they were the, not citizen oriented, this was a service oriented. We took just the physical services as is and we have digitalized them. So we, and in, this was several uh, services that we have in our, we had in our previous versions, they were just uh, for providing information, that's all. So we saw that we made several mistakes and in our new version, we hope that we have solved these mistakes. First one was that in our new version of eGov, we have made our services citizen oriented rather than the service oriented. So we saw that the citizens in real life, they have a difficulty to match the acts, the events that they have in their real life with the digital e-government services that we have on our e-portal. So we made the, our services on live events like this. They have a, they have, it's a very easy for citizens to find the digital services. And second one, that the second feature that we have actually in our new gov, e -gov is that we have a digital document. We have changed the approach to documents. So instead of to ask the citizens to always to upload to the documents, and we have started to integrate the the gov different government information system in back. So our, the new approach for digitalization is to make it end to end. What does it mean end to end? It means that no human interaction, minimum input from the citizen side. So if the data exists already in any uh, government information systems, we are not asking this from the citizens. So we are bringing through our digital bridge that we have in back. So the new, uh, features that we have in our new uh, eGov is a constant management. Actually, we are providing digital tools to citizens to provide their consent to share their personal data with, uh, with different government uh, information systems and also with the private sector. So I think in this topics, it will be the challenge that we have faced during these years what, which challenge we have faced and how we have solved. Maybe it can be interesting. It can be common points that we have faced. One, uh, one of the significant uh, challenge that we have faced, this was the security and the protection of personal data. If uh, as we uh, go going online, we, as we are trying to digitalize the services, we, sure, we must ensure the security and the protection of the personal data. The second challenge that we have faced, this was a, a digital literacy gap. We know that not everyone is uh, equally comfortable for, for technology. So 
it's crucial to, to digitalize the services to make them accessible for all, regardless of age, the age, their background. So for this reason, we have two big projects in our country, in Azerbaijan. First one is a digital academy. We have launched this uh, project. So here we have a different digital literacy programs for special focus groups. And the second biggest project that we have is uh, online Azerbaijan. Uh, we are aiming to cover all the territory of our country with a high-speed broadband internet by the end of the 2000, 2024. We have successfully finished a big part of the uh, project. So uh, by finishing this project, we will ensure the accessibility to digital services. The third that big challenges was the bureaucratic resistance, actually. This is, a, to be honest, I think in, in all these Eurasian countries, we have faced with the same uh, problems. Bureaucratic resistance is hard to change, actually. Even, it's, 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 no, it's not very really easy to change the big corporation, big institutions, because of the digital skills, because of the the interest of individual persons uh, because of the technology also. So for this, uh, we saw that we have, we should in our country create the process, automatic process, which will motivate the digitalization. And that's why we have changed the legislation. We have adopted new legislation acts where to break this bureaucratic resistance and second, the uh, part of this uh, challenge was the different prioritization of the different the government agencies. They had their own journey, own roadmap for digitalization. And that's why we have created highlight the common digitalization journey for who country for services like this. Each agency they should synchronize their digitalization journey with different. Uh, uh, government agencies. For example, to be able to apply the EID, digital ID the, the, in our country, in, 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 in our country we have mentioned it in more than 700 legal acts, the physical ID keyword, like, so we have changed more than 700 leg legislation acts to be able to use digital documents. So overall, this is a uh, old challenge that we have faced in our country, actually. Yeah, cool. And uh, actually, I, honestly, even in my private sector, we see all the time the same thing. The f main resistance in any change is people themselves. Yes. So to change their paradigm is kind of hard. So uh, Kazakhstan probably, uh, I will ask Ahiai about that, but uh, he will share his uh, experience in that. Uh, but uh, I, I do understand we all went through this COVID and uh, for sure, it speed up the process of digitalization of each of our countries, right? Uh, what's the journey of uh, Georgia? Thank you. Well, um, as we have already mentioned, Georgia started, um, NAPR was created in 2004. And uh, basically, we, um, we created the systems itself. NAPR's uh, registration system is fully digital. It's not paper-based. So, um, in the COVID pandemic, uh, which was biggest challenge, I think, what governments had, uh, impressive part was that uh, NAPR and its front offices, for example, public service hall, has not stopped working for a day. And uh, COVID pandemic showed us what, where are our weak, weaknesses and where is our strong side, right? What we need to adapt, what we need to improve. And uh, this one day that you wake up and everything is closed around you. Uh, and I have already mentioned that we have more than uh, eight registering systems. So uh, we somehow overnight managed to not only infrastructurally, um, uh, for example, deliver laptops or computers, but we are speaking about the access to the system and the servers. So, and uh, I am more than proud to the best practices for, of all countries, not only European countries, but all countries across. And we try our best to share their practices. And the same goes with the electronic services, with governance and so on and so on and we were kind of like uh, our main direction is to be always updated be modern be developed and that's kind of our main yeah, strategy thank you thank you uh, 
let's move to that table. Uh, I hope uh, my colleagues, uh, we are locals, right? So uh, I will ask uh, our guest from Kyrgyzstan first, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, we're a hospitable uh, nation, so uh, we need to uh, give first word to our guests. Uh, uh, How is Kyrgyzstan moving towards digi digitalization? In terms of digitalization, well, we are doing a lot of things. For instance, about five years ago, in order to get some sort of uh, paper, uh, a person was supposed to go physically to some facility, write uh, inquiry, and get an. Uh, right now, there is a mobile app through which every citizen of Kyrgyzstan can get some government services and some certificates and every year the list of the available services extends. Also from the side of the Ministry of Agriculture we are doing some work to create the farmers service center. What is this? This is a single one-stop shopping window where every citizen can get information or services provided by the Ministry of Agriculture. Hopefully soon we'll be able to present this information and every citizen, regardless of the decision of Kyrgyzstan or gas or investors, they will be able to get the necessary information and consultations and from the side of the government there will be some support, incentive loans, certain types of activities, the so-called clusters, for instance, for bee farming, so all farmers can get together and it's going to be convenient for them to get it together. A single location gets to get to some volume of operation so that any person who comes to a point so that if anyone decides to buy their products, it's going to be done from a single location. So all of this information is going to be available at, uh, universally. Everything will be at a single one-stop shopping window, single aggregate point about agricultural data. Very also interesting experience, right? Uh, so Yahya, can you take this lead and uh, just tell about Kazakhstan experience. I could, but it's not my job for, the, for this panel. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Ruslan. Um, I guess uh, the, our journey is no different than our neighbors. I mean, we, we were all, all the, at the same point. We had the same start. Uh, we had all the heritage of the Soviet Bolshevik bureaucracy. We had our independence. We didn't have many resources. Uh, however, we had one thing in common. We wanted to change it. So, you know, the, the, at the beginning we had a similar situation. We had all these bureaucratic processes that we wanted to digitalize. Uh, I remember in the, at the end of 90s, uh, the, most of the IT people were from the private sector. Government, I mean, you know, I used to, actually, uh, as a, as a schoolboy, I used to work for the same company where, which I'm leading right now. And my job was there to, uh, to digitalize some statistical data. That's it. And now it's a, it's a big company with 400 people and we're doing completely different things because government wanted to invest to digitalize all the services. And it's the same in every country. In, uh, the, the, our esteemed panelists are saying the same thing. We wanted to digitalize the government services. We wanted to collect the data. And I think, you know, more or less uh, with, uh, with, with the various rate of success, we are pretty good at it. Yeah, so uh, I looked at the, the, our ratings on the e-governance before the session. Uh, yeah, we might be slightly ahead, but we are on a pretty much the same page. Uh, however, I think in Kazakhstan we had something unique. Um, our government started sending all the young people, young, uh, the, the generation abroad to study. We, we have this pro program called Bolasha. And apart from that, we had several universities who would be focused on teaching IT specialists. You know, one of the best is the SDU, Slim and Demirel University. And the alumni of that university, they have made 
a lot of changes that otherwise would not be possible. Our current, uh, the Minister of the, the, for the Digital and Space, uh, the, the, the I think he's from SDU as well. So if you look into the alumni of that, uh, the, that university, they were triggers of a lot of changes that happened in the country. So I think that you know, we, we have to put, we give him a credit for that. And the second thing that happened was that um, the, the, each of these, you know, the, the government sectors, they were given autonomy to build their own system. So uh, currently we have about 400 different government systems. They work with, that, with each other. Sometimes they don't work with, that, with each other. Uh, however, the, they had autonomy to build their own systems. Once they had that autonomy, they were able to generate the data that they wanted. They, they were able to automate their government services. I think this was uh, something that was unique to Kazakhstan in terms of, the, you know, I, I don't know, unfortunately, much in detail about your countries, but I think that I can, you know, my general comment would be like that. Thank you. And uh, worth also mentioning, uh, at least yesterday during the Deputy Digital Minister, uh, Kalmar Solution, he also mentioned these ratings. I'm not a fan of ratings, but at least it says we are the first from CIS countries in the EGOV, which is uh, kind of nice, but uh, I think worth mentioning. It's not that cool as it looks like on the ratings. COVID also showed all the weaknesses of uh, technical-wise of the system, right? Because uh, during the COVID, a lot of... Uh, uh, requests came to the platform and it's just collapsed and, and, and it was unavailable for for a, for like five or six hours or something like that so definitely there is still challenges uh, although someone ranks us first in CIS I don't know uh, we have uh, so we are talking about upstream uh, legislation upstream uh, challenges and upstream government level uh, approach right but uh, we have uh, Oljas here, who is from City Almaty City Council, so Astana City uh, Almaty City Hall. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm also wondering what the uh, city is doing because downstream with the cities they have totally different challenges, totally different approach in the digitalizing because uh, they actually all about citizens, right? So what citizens wants, and I want to hear what's. Uh, city is doing in the digital approach yes, thank you so much uh, in general yes we do focus on citizens but uh, we also focus on building a data centric model and uh, uh, data centric uh, decision making in general uh, so uh, Almaty city uh, last year uh, 2022 December of 2022 has developed uh, the development program until uh, 2025 and 2030 and uh, it uh, has a strong focus on digitalization itself uh, since digitalization plays a role in every sector whether it's transportation security uh, education uh, so there are many uh, implementations of digitalizations and a lot of work for us to do um, uh, so, if I would mention the main uh, projects that we have, uh, first one is a, a situational center. So it's uh, very important to uh, that the city, our mayor, uh, and uh, uh, city management in general uh, has enough data uh, to rely upon and to make uh, uh, decisions based on data. So that's the, the focus of uh, our department in general is to make sure the data that uh, the mayor receives is, uh, 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 is accurate and uh, we're able to provide it uh, uh, in a quick manner. So uh, that's the main focus that the city has. We also have our local uh, e-services available to the citizens, uh, which include the uh, e-ticketing systems, uh, uh, some uh, services for tourists, services for uh, businesses um, and in general they all have their own small uh, ecosystems uh, of their own but uh, uh, next year we're planning to uh, create that's just an idea that we talked about we're looking at different city experiences uh, where there's a one single super app which uh, city level super app we, we know we have a governmental uh, e-gov mobile uh, which uh, a lot of people use 
uh, but now uh, because Almaty is the biggest city in Kazakhstan and it has so many issues, so many small services, uh, our idea is to uh, have a one city uh, application. Uh, we're still looking at, uh, there was a good example in uh, Istanbul, uh, they have an application called uh, Istanbul Sinan, uh, which almost uh, 4 million people have downloaded already and, and uh, uh, that's a great example of giving a single entry point for city uh, c citizens. Um, uh, that's uh, one focus that c city is taking. Another issue is uh, security is a big uh, uh, factor in all of our work. Uh, so uh, right now we have a unified uh, video monitoring system which already combines uh, uh, 18,000 video cameras from uh, uh, different places of the city, uh, as well as uh, analytics is uh, also there. So uh, uh, if there's a fire somewhere, uh, the operator gets an alarm. Uh, so because uh, in Almaty there's almost 100, uh, 130,000 cameras in general, our goal is uh, to have uh, at least 100,000 of them connected to our system. Uh, and uh, since it's impossible to view all those uh, video cameras uh, for operators, it always should be an uh, alarm-based uh, system. Right? Uh, so uh, there are many applications in which uh, uh, the cameras and combining the data, merging it, uh, for uh, data analytical cases that we present to the mayor. So that's uh, our main job in general uh, as a department. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, just uh, also sharing with the audience if they are interested, four of you. Uh, <laughs> Almaty was always a driving force of innovation in any field because it was the capital long time. Uh, all the talents was, were here located, all the financial institutions were here, so most of the government or uh, national-wide in, uh, innovations are actually originated here in Almaty. So thank you for, for sharing uh, uh, your experience here. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of uh, EGOV, digitalizing services, it's all about citizens, right? Their experience. Uh, it's all about uh, collaboration between private sector, uh, civil society. Uh, and uh, uh, i just wondering, can you share any kind of uh, uh, good cases, maybe, maybe uh, uh, bad cases of such collaboration between private sector in digitalizing the, the services? Katerin, can, can we start with you? Yeah. you? You're the only lady here, so. <laughs> I don't want to miss a list, so I'm going to use a little note. Uh, best example for that is authorized persons. Authorized persons is, uh, was uh, and is uh, innovative uh, project of uh, NPR. And basically what is that it allows notaries, banks, real estate agencies, uh, microfinance organizations, lawyers, legals, and sur surveying firms to become authorized users uh, of the electronic programs of national agency or public registry. And this basically means that those persons, after getting authorization from NAPR, are, um, uh, are permitted to have access to the NAPR servers. They have, to, uh, they have access to the servers and they can get any information that is needed for the processing. They can apply directly to the NAPR. And uh, this is the, like the best example of the NAPR, how the, uh, the government entity and uh, the, how the private private sector are engaged, engaged to each other and how they collaborate it. But this is not only um, example. Uh, I have mentioned the blockchain, smart contracts and AI, MAPS, Goji platform. And uh, I would like to like just note that uh, in all the projects, uh, in all the processes that is going on on the National Agency of Public Registry, we, um, we always share the experience, the expertise and the um, ideas of the private sector as well, but not only a private sector, but the citizens as well. We get the feedbacks 
we listen to them, <laughs> bright, loud and sound, yeah. And so um, we try our best to make uh, uh, services much more efficient, fast and um, citizen-centric and not only citizens because we have many foreigners as well. Um, thank you, that's quite yeah. all. Yeah. It's kind of good approach when you listen to your client, it's always good, even in my VC area. Uh, in Azerbaijan, any good, bad cases? Um, we have started this type of collaboration with, with the private sector uh, five years ago. Actually, we have started with to share the, the government data with the banks. Actually, today we have uh, more than 100 uh, companies from private sectors that they have uh, access to personal data of the, from the government information system that lets them to build their private, in private sectors, their services on this. So to be able to extend this data exchange the, the, from the government side to, for, to business, I mean, from G2B, well, this year we have started the constant management system where we will simplify the technologically the ex data exchange. It means that uh, the private sector, by getting the digital consent of the citizens, they will have uh, access to the data of the citizens and, of, the, of course, of the business size to build, to be able to build their services on this. This is the first way, fa the phase that uh, the benefits of the corporation was the private sector, and this year we have started new approach. We would like to keep the government in the backside, actually, to be in the, from the technology aspect to make the, our government uh, in the API level and to provide the APIs to private sector, which can make their build their services on this and to provide even government services instead of so uh, to keep our job should be the digitalizing of the back. The procedures, process of the government services, and to let the private sector to uh, to provide the public services to to citizens. Wow, that, that's actually uh, it, it's shocking for me that uh, Azerbaijan government is actually that open to share with private sector so so many things. Right, it's basically providing a platform as uh, open code, open source uh, when private. Uh, Companies can uh, do more. Nice. Как происходит такая коллаборация частного сектора? Could you please tell us how it works uh, in terms of collaboration between private and public sector in Kyrgyzstan? Do you have several stories like this? I believe yes. One product uh, is uh, a model in terms of uh, this approach. We have a veterinary service, and part of the function. Uh, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture shared these functions with private vets and they operate very successfully exchanging the required information. Private vet uh, makes decision faster versus uh, the state machine and uh, hence uh, we provide uh, more timely support to the farmers in terms of vet services. Well, I understand this is a long journey and I wish you success in this collaboration with the Back to you. private uh, sector. We already discussed it together and you told me yesterday this uh, uh, good example with this collaboration with the private sector. Can you share it with the audience as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, Without uh, the getting, uh, you know, collaboration with the private sector in terms of the development of the, of the transformation and being able to listen to the society, you know, the, uh, all of the transformation will 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 fall into the same pitfall. Uh, so what we have here is uh, not maybe as open uh, sharing information sharing um, the collaboration with the business. However, we have a yellow pages principle. So you know, whatever government is trying to digitalize. You know, it goes to the public first, uh, to the private sector first, works together with uh, the private companies. Uh, many of the local IT companies, they work directly with the government to develop uh, certain solutions. In fact, it, maybe in Kazakhstan, maybe, maybe we are on the more heavy side on dependencies on government projects. 
uh, I mean, I mean the, the, the IT sector. We, we have that sort of uh, the, the dependency. Uh, at the same time, we, we use the, 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 the social network directly to uh, get feedback from the, with, with, with the, to work directly with the public society. Um, the, one of the examples is uh, our state procurement system. So um, the, 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 the system itself, is, it, it, it just completely uh, covers you know, the, the procurement process, uh, the, the, it, it digitalized uh, everything. However, all the data we have is openly available to everybody. So the, the public sector uses this, the, the, their own solutions to pull the data from the procurement system, analyzes, and gives us feedback in terms of if we, something is happening over there, if something is wrong, or if something needs to be simplified. So we work directly with the so, civil society to um, uh, see something that the government may, may not be able to see. And that's more reactive approach. But more on the proactive approach, uh, we have uh, last few years we have another initiative which, which is actually it's called proactive approach so for example um, in the past uh, if, if, if you have a child you have to go to the government services and get some paperwork done now government doesn't want to do that government wants to be more proactively provide that service so if, if the government knows that you know if somebody's expecting a baby so they can prepare and uh, anticipate that action and be ready to provide that service proactively so that's the tendency that where we're going as a next phase and that is a result of the, the close collaboration with the, the, the society as well yeah this is a, again uh, coming back to its uh, upstream collaboration but uh, e on e city level it's uh, more yeah. collaboration there. Yeah. We know about yeah. a lot of uh, yeah. cases, but uh, can you share those cases with, uh, with our guests? Uh, yes, uh, I think I, I should mention about one of our uh, development programs. It's called an IT Startup Ecosystem Development Program. It's a three-year program uh, where uh, operator of this program is a uh, most incubator. Uh, within these three years, they're uh, going to have about 95 uh, events and projects, which include uh, acceleration programs, which include uh, the education of uh, business angels. Uh, and the accelerators, uh, they focus on city needs as well. So um, um, last week, uh, actually, uh, actually this week, uh, there was a, a demo day for where 30 startups, different startups from Almaty, they showcase their solutions to um, uh, Almaty municipality members as well as uh, investors, poss uh, possible investors. And uh, there were a few really, really great projects which we plan to pilot uh, so, um, in some uh, territories of the city. So usually we start with a pilot and then uh, if the pilot is successful, then we try to collaborate in general. In those cases, uh, Sergeyek, uh, you have Sergeyek, this private company providing civilians, right? Uh, and, uh, and the cameras and everything. There is uh, Huawei who providing uh, working capital to that private company uh, who has this uh, city under management. They, you as a, a digital arm of the city uh, providing this uh, situational uh, room or uh, center, as you name it. So there is a huge collaboration. Unfortunately, uh, we started actually late, on 20 minutes, but uh, I've received a message that uh, time is already run out. I have a couple questions more that I'm actually interested in, but uh, guys, please, uh, round of applause to our esteemed panelists. Thank you, yeah.